I'm sorry. This isn't a good time. Well, I'm not going away. We need to settle some things. Right now. Why have you been hiding out? I have not been hiding out. Well, every time I stop by the dark room at Temple, your buddies tell me that I've just missed you. Well, I've been busy. Have you been too busy to return my messages? You made it pretty clear you office? didn't want me in your life, so I'm just trying to oblige. I didn't say I didn't want you in my That's life. Not that way to me. <laughs> I, I want you so much. It makes me crazy. Oh, as long as I don't mix with your family or bring presents by for Jamie or talk to Laura, huh? I want you all to myself. I wanted to have a private, a special, a very personal relationship, just the two of us, alone, unto ourselves. That's what I wanted. Because I'm not good enough for your family. No! How can you think that? Easy. I told you what this is about. My son has had a lot of disappointments Brooke, this last there's year. No I just, around I didn't... this. Look, if you don't want me to be in the most important part of your life, then I'm not fit to be in any part of your life. No, no, I didn't... Look, I miss you too, but... If you are ashamed to have me with you anytime, anywhere, then I shouldn't be hanging around you. Look, I... I did not mean to insult you. I just thought that we could have an exclusive adults-only relationship. I thought that you would be happy with that. I don't want a part-time adults-only relationship. I want it all. Or I don't want anything. Now, when you're ready to give and take 100%, you know where to find me. I hate to be impolite, but this is not a good time for me. Please. Act, wasn't it? Whoa, she's got you really sucked in, hasn't she? Hardly. I think you're falling for her, man. Falling in love with Brooke English is definitely not on the agenda. Scott, straight up. Make it a double, please. Coming right up. I've been waiting for you. Why? I need some help. Uh, yeah, with what? Well, I have a hell of a problem. Courtesy of Jim Thomason. I never meant to cause you any trouble. Oh, no. You're not the cause of it. Come again? Manhattan, no bitters, please. Sure. So what is this uh, problem of yours? Well, it may take some time. We've got all the time in the world. Shall we uh, sit over here, maybe? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. See, I don't know, it started a few months ago. Something I began to notice, um, sort of a frazzle. Phenomenon. Frazzle. Yeah. I mean, I thought I'd come to a point in my life where I had things under control. I mean, I had weathered a few professional storms, some personal disasters. I'd survived. I'd even thrived. My children were on the right track. My work was well received. So I considered myself a capable boss and a good mom. A sound conclusion. And thanks to to a wild time as a headstrong teenager, followed by a dutiful period as a town patriot, guided by the steady input of that etiquette maven, Phoebe Wallingford, I considered myself equal to any social occasion. Again, I would concur. Well, then you would be wrong. Because Jim... I'm no longer any of those things. Sure you are. No, I'm not. 
And that is because of you. Huh. Well, I've never been accused of this before. What should we call it? Um, dethroning a social superstar? I don't think it's that grand. I just think that I'm not as together as my old self was. Well, there might be some other spectacular reasons for that. Such as? Well, falling out of the sky in a burning hunk of flame. Yes, that's part of it. I mean, the crash changed me forever. It changed me, too. I didn't mean to make it sound like it was an exclusive experience. But it was ours, exclusively. And we survived an incredible catastrophe together. We've been reinvented. And whoever we are now, it doesn't matter because we can't go back in the past and change it. So where does that leave us? Or who does it leave us? Do you believe in fate? No, I believe we make our own destiny. Then maybe tonight is something that we made. Us together. Me. <laughs> no longer the safe. Together. Brooke English. The upright citizen. And you. And me what? Because when I'm with you, I do things that Brooke English does not do. <laughs> like what? Like pick up a strange man in a bar. Hmm. Any man? Not any man. A handsome, fascinating, dangerous man. Me? You picking up me? Grilling burgers in the backyard or changing the oil in the station wagon or wearing fuzzy slippers and a robe and opening Christmas presents under the Christmas tree. No presents? What, have I been a bad boy? Very bad. Mm. So I'm not in the Norman Rockwell picture, huh? No. Well, where am I? Let's go upstairs. Yeah. 